The Express Rail Link, or XRL, is a major infrastructure project connecting Hong Kong with China's high-speed rail system. It will facilitate Hong Kong's social and economic integration with cities in the Pearl River Delta and enhance Hong Kong's position as a regional hub. Running from a new terminus in West Kowloon up to the border, the XRL comprises 26 kilometers of double track with trains traveling at speeds of up to 200 kilometers an hour. Total cost of the project is estimated at 71.5 billion Hong Kong dollars. In May 2010, the partnership of Dragage Hong Kong and its parent company, Bouygues of France, secured two XRL contracts, 820 and 821. Contract 820 consists of two parallel 9.33 meter diameter TBM tunnels with a combined length of nine kilometers. They run in reclamation along an old coastline, passing through Tai Kok Choi, Nam Chiong, and Chung Sha Wan districts of the Kowloon Peninsula. Contract 821 is a single 14.2 meter wide drill and blast tunnel, connecting with the 820 tunnels under the Butterfly Valley district, and runs 2.7 kilometers north to Shek Yam, where it meets with tunnels constructed under contract 822. 820's four tunnels were bored using two slurry-type TBMs, which started at the crossover box, located midway along the alignment and running north and south, respectively. A gazetted worksite on the nearby waterfront contained the slurry treatment plant, or STP, and a barging point for the disposal of treated waste. Designed by the German firm Herrenknecht, a world leader in tunnel boring machines, the TBMs were built across the border in Nansha. The TBMs had a working pressure of 5 bar, with a cutter head diameter of 9.33 meters. The cutter head has four twin discs and 47 single discs of 19 inches diameter. Inspection by Dragage and Herrenknecht staff during manufacture ensured the highest possible standards. In September 2011, the first TBM was completed at the factory, the second three months later. Meanwhile, work had been progressing on the 821 drill and blast tunnels. First of all, one added, 650 meter long, 160 square meter, and then the main running tunnels, 140 square meter, 1.1 kilometer to the south towards A20, and 1.6 km to the north toward another project. Special narrow wheelbase mining trucks were imported from South Africa, ensuring an easy fit in tight quarters. Good progress was also being made on 820 with the construction of the launching shaft, 160 meters long by 22 meters wide by 35 meters deep. On the night of the 27th of October 2011, the first TBM arrived and was delivered by road under police escort. Within a month, the cutter head was lowered into the shaft and the on-site assembly of the TBM began. On the 11th of January 2012, a ceremony was held to commemorate the launch of the TBM, and it was soon making good headway on the North Down track. Cruise shifts were 12 hours on, six days a week, with the TBM operating continuously 
except for stoppages for routine maintenance. Uh, this is the PCA segment for our TBM tunnel lining. This segment is uh, manufactured in the factory in Shenzhen and transported to Hong Kong by trucks. Each tunnel ring comprises seven segments, 1.8 meters long and weighing 7.5 tons. The proprietary navigation system guiding the TBM was Pixis, designed by Buig. The, the other line will transfer the data to the receiver prism. Then the data will transfer to the computer. The computer will compute the horizontal and vertical difference, and also pitch your raw data. The pilot will based on those information to drive the TBM manually. In April 2012, the second TBM was delivered, reassembled, and the South Town track got underway. The TBM heading towards the West Kowloon terminus. Ground conditions range from 50% completely decomposed granite to 12% mixed ground to 38% full face rock. Being a slurry type TBM, large diameter pipes conveyed the soil to the surface, then along to the STP. So here is a slurry treatment plant. It's a plant where we are treating all the soil and the slurry coming from the TBM. The plant uh, separates the excavated ground and the slurry, and in the same time we readjust the slurry quality to send it back to the TBM. The STP was designed by the MS company in France and built by a specialist subcontractor in Hong Kong. Each of the two separate plants process 1,800 cubic meters of slurry per hour. Upon arrival, the slurry mixed with excavated soil passes through a trommel to separate larger solids, these going through a further two stages of separation to remove the sand, this then being sent directly to the barge by conveyor belt. To maintain the slurry quality, we add some fresh bentonite, water and chemicals. All this depends on the laboratory test. Slurry not going back to the TBM is pumped to a filter press, which produces cakes having less than 25% moisture content, these being barged out of Hong Kong. So what you can see on the first pile, uh, more red, is uh, completely decomposed granite coming from the south TBM. And what you have actually falling is uh, fractured granite from the north TBM. All this is going to China to be used as a backfill. The movement and settlement along the southern section of the alignment was carefully monitored by a specialist subcontractor using state-of-the-art real-time monitoring equipment. During the construction of the A20 tunnel, we crossed beneath several structures. Uh, to avoid any effect of our tunneling works on the structures, we carry out manual and automatic monitoring. On this location in Tai Kok Choi, we have several prisms located on each of these buildings which then they monitor both automatically and independently. To ensure the ADMS system is accurate, we also take manual survey, which double checks that the system is correct. Jet grouting and tuba manchette grouting was undertaken in areas of soft ground for the cross passages, and also to protect and support nearby building foundations, the equipment becoming a familiar sight along many of the district's roads. Meanwhile, on 821, a 150-ton travelling formwork for the entrance adit was towed into position. The clearances were minimal, and the operators demonstrated some exceptional driving skills. With the formwork assembled, casting of the lining began. At the same time, blasting in the main tunnels continued. The excavated tunnels were 15.5 meters wide by 10.5 meters high. Drill and blast operations consumed 1,600 kilograms of explosives a day, with 2,000 tons of rock being removed daily by road to the barging point. The routine consisted of drilling, charging, blasting, mucking out, scaling, mapping, then shot greeting. Good progress was made, 
with the two drives averaging 5.8 meters a day. The formwork for the lining of the main tunnels were designed by Dragage and built in Beijing. The southbound formwork was designed to be enlarged in stages for connection to the TBM tunnels. A waterproof membrane was placed before concreting the 600 to 1000 mm thick lining. A cycle of four pours per week was frequently achieved. The construction sequence is that after excavation we installed the primary lining. After that, the central walkway and the central dividing wall, followed by the maintenance walkway and the derailment curbs last. On the 14th of December 2012 came the breakthrough of the first TBM tunnel on the North Down track. A ceremony was held in a cavern where the 821 and 820 tunnels intersected. Many of the workers attended and there was a happy team spirit. It was a case of a job well done safely. In the weeks that followed, the TBM was dismantled. The cut ahead was cut into manageable sections and transported back down the tunnel. Other components, including the shield and main bearing, were transported in a similar manner. Once back in the launching shaft, the TBM was reassembled and launched on the north up track. Extensive jet grouting was used to treat the ground where cross passages joined the 820 tunnels. This is our standard size setup for cross passage excavation that allow us to construct the cross passage concurrently with TBM excavation. As you can be seen, we install platform and divert utilities. In this way, we maintain the access to the main tunnel and we can concurrently do all the work for our cross passages. A total of 18 cross passages were excavated, half of them in rock, half in soft ground. Here you can see a typical excavation in jet grout. We are going to apply shock rip on this portion of uh, cross passage very soon. At the final stage, we proceed with the construction of the permanent walls, which consists first in full waterproofing of the cross passage and second in the construction of all the necessary ceiling walls. In January 2013 on the South Down track, unforeseen obstructions were encountered as the TBM approached the end of the drive. 21 large H-beams had been driven into the ground to support a large sewage pipe 10 meters below ground, but were not shown on any drawings. These had to be removed before the TBM could proceed. The cutter head with his uh, tools, the cutter disc, touch some uh, strong edge beam, like we can see, all the tracks. The TBM was uh, at that stage completely uh, stopped. We had to, uh, to organize some special team with divers to dive at 3.4 bar to remove and extract uh, pieces by pieces the, the pile to allow the TBM to restart and continue its journey. Because of the dangers of cutting and removing steel in compressed air, crews were trained on the surface in a full-size mock-up and also in a hyperbaric chamber. This is our main lock to compress the people to send in inside the working chamber, which is pressurized around 3.4 to 3.5 bar normally. Wearing breathing apparatus and protective clothing, they worked in extremely hot and humid conditions. Time at the face was generally limited to two hours, followed by two hours decompression for each crew member. In addition, they had to remain on site for a further two hours after a shift to check for any indication of nitrogen narcosis. Full medicals were undertaken monthly by a hyperbaric specialist doctor. The H-beams were cut by electric torches into one meter sections and taken out through the materials lock. In general, removing these obstructions proved to be an extremely difficult and high-risk operation, and the drive was delayed by almost seven months. In March 2013, a breakthrough ceremony was held in 821, where the northbound tunnel joined contract 822 at Shek Yam, a drill and blast tunnel built by another contractor. Finally, in August 2013, the last H-beam obstruction was removed on the South Down track and the TBM continued on its way. A month later, it broke through into a water-filled shaft. 
This methodology was necessary because of the soft ground conditions and high water table. The water pressure in the shaft balanced out with the groundwater pressure, thus preventing washing out of the soil and groundwater entering the tunnel. The TBM was then dismantled. Some pieces were taken back to the shaft by road, other parts trailed back down the tunnel. Back on 821, the concreting on the centre partition walls was well advanced. Behind me is the Kwai Chung ventilation attic in its final stages of construction. We have the, uh, the TBS slab and the TBS dividing wall behind it. We are currently in the final stages of the construction of the plenum slabs and behind me is also the lining of the vault. This chamber is some 80 metres from corner to corner, some 37 metres deep and some 60 metres from one end to the other. It's the largest excavation on this part of the project. The tunnels were beginning to look like the finished product. In November 2013, the second northbound tunnel broke through into contract 821. It was the end of the line for this particular TBM. Reusable parts were traded back to the manufacturer, the rest was scrapped. After the TBM was removed, casting of the track slab could commence as well as the permanent way brackets, with the handover to the specialist rail installation contractor in May 2014. In addition to the tunnels were two ventilation buildings. One was located at the tunnel entrance on 821, the other at the 820 launching shaft. These are multi-storey buildings, housing tunnel ventilation fans and other railway systems equipment. On 820, the building is predominantly located underground, with vent shafts connecting the tunnel and ancillary plant rooms. The refurbished TBM from the South Down track was relaunched in mid-December 2013 with a new cut ahead for the final South Up track. In the first week, good progress was made until more unforeseen obstructions were encountered. This time, the H-beams were unused building piles driven into the ground years earlier. To complicate matters, many were in small pieces. It took two and a half months before the obstructions were removed and the TBM was back on track. The crews worked steadily, sometimes being able to recover time, and at peak managed to cover half a kilometre in a single month. Finally, at the end of September 2014, the Southtown Tunnel reached the water-filled shaft, where the same breakthrough procedure was repeated. This brought to an end principal tunnel work. A week later, a celebration was held to commemorate the occasion. I want to thank this uh, fantastic team I have the privilege to, uh, to lead in Hong Kong for the performance they have delivered. I think what has been achieved here is truly outstanding. It had been an extremely challenging project, mainly because of the obstructions issue. However, all the challenges were met and the team was proud to maintain their usual high standard of quality and safety in this new and exciting contribution to Hong Kong's continued development.